Hey guys, it's Sour, and today I wanted to make a video breaking down the advanced supply drop percentage odds. Surprisingly, I haven't seen anyone do this yet, even though they came out a while ago and I've had this data for a couple weeks now. Usually the internet is on top of these things, but maybe I'll be the first to do this, even though I find that unlikely. But anyway, when I say percentage odds, I mean your chances of getting elite, professional, and enlisted items, because it does seem to differ from the regular supply drops. Of course, that is partly because, as you may know, there are certain rules that govern advanced supply drops it isn't simply a percentage chance you're guaranteed to get three items one of the three must be professional or better and you're guaranteed to get at least one weapon you almost always get one weapon and two apparel items I say almost always because I do have some evidence of someone getting two weapons in one drop which is very strange I suspect it was actually a bug and you're always supposed to get one weapon and two apparel items but I'll get to that in a bit anyway so the advanced supply drop odds do seem different from regular supply drops even though there's a good chance that the actual actual coded percentages are the same, but I just can't know that. My data does show the odds as slightly better, probably because of those rules that I just mentioned. So here we are at this spreadsheet. You guys get to see my cluttered taskbar. Usually I'd full screen the browser, but I need to switch between tabs. So you may notice that this spreadsheet looks very similar to this one you may have already seen, which is my spreadsheet for regular supply drops. This here is data collected from my own supply drop opening videos. And by the way, both of these spreadsheets will be linked in the description. On this regular supply supply drop spreadsheet we're up to a sample size of 350 supply drops we would be at 400 by now if I didn't have to wait for the dang ps4 update and those extra armory slots for a couple days later but they're both finally here now yay so that video will be coming shortly but that aside you can see our current running percentage hangs around 52% enlisted 32% professional and 16% elite now if we take a look at the advanced supply drop spreadsheet this is a sample size of 230 advanced supply drops the most you can buy with the current temporary limit they have in place but I of course did not open that many of these I in fact have not opened a single one I collected this data from T Martin's advanced supply drop opening videos I asked permission over Twitter to cite his series for this data and I can't know if he ever got that tweet but I waited a couple weeks and then figured asking permission in this case was more of a formality I don't feel like I'm overstepping by making this video otherwise I wouldn't be doing it after all nobody's being harmed here and I'm the one who took the time to compile these videos into this spreadsheet but kudos to T Martin for buying as he said himself a crazy amount of these things but I suppose crazy is relative. It wasn't really a crazy thing to do if that's what he wants to spend his money on and he has the money to spend. No big deal. Knock yourself out. Crazier purchases have been made by people pursuing their hobbies and it especially makes sense because he can make those opening videos, but whatever. Where am I going with this? This is not a video where we're breaking down T. Martin's decisions. We're breaking down advanced supply drop statistics. So as you can see, after the first video, which was a sample size of 100 drops, the answer seemed very clear. It was amazing. A probability miracle. The numbers were 136 enlisted, 106 professional and 58 elite now if you change those numbers just slightly and take away one enlisted take away one professional add those two to elite you now have 135 105 60 it turns out that those numbers exactly equal 45 percent 35 percent 20 percent it seemed too good to be true those were very conclusive and well human friendly numbers however in the next two videos the luck seemed to diminish and we ended with these odds about 47 35 18 the elites got fewer and the enlisted grew higher but you can see how much the percentage can vary the number of professional drops fell two percent in the second video then gained that two percent and more right back in the next one in the same sample of 65 supply drops in episode two and three he got 60 professional items and then 79 professional items so that's probability for you and still when you can Compare these numbers to my regular supply drop data the odds do seem better but not by that much so you can draw your own conclusions with the percentages here here are the numbers I got just thought it would be a cool piece of information to share with you all I will briefly touch on this oddity here you can see in this third video one supply drop yielded two weapons and one apparel item whereas every single other supply drop followed the formula of two apparel one weapon. You can see a screenshot of the supply drop there, and because this only happened once that I saw in 230 drops, I'm very tempted to believe this is a minor bug. Perhaps the HBR3 Raider was accidentally classified as an apparel item. I don't really know what happened there, but it doesn't seem like it was supposed to. Anyway, let us now move on to the second and last part of this video, which is essentially, should you bother buying these things? And well, that's entirely up to you, but let's make one thing clear, they are not pay to win. Dislikes incoming for having that opinion. I said this in my last video which discussed the controversy over viable supply drops where I took a look at both sides of the argument and I said it then, I will say it again, they are clearly not 
pay to win. And that's coming from a person who's really not a big fan of viable supply drops personally for other reasons. And it sounded like you guys agreed with this. Introducing them kind of devalues the time put into grinding for them. It feels less worth it, less special. A lot of people play this game just to earn supply drops. That's what's bringing them back. And if you can just pay for it, get it. And whether you get everything you wanted to get or just a bunch of crap that you don't want, it's kind of like, well, now what? I guess we're done here. <laughs> you go pick up a different game. And there's the fact that this change is kind of a slippery slope towards pay to win. You could imagine something happening like if the next Call of Duty had a Black Ops 1 style COD point system, they could sell packs of COD points, which necessarily isn't pay to win, but once again, it's a pay to skip the grind. It makes all the people who play for their COD points not like the game as much and so on and so on. So I'd, I'm not really a big fan of it, but with the way things are, it is not pay to win and it is not a big deal. Nobody should be up in arms about this. I'm more than happy to let the people who want to buy these things go right ahead and have their fun. You can easily drop $20 on this thing, get your 10 supply drops, and all you end up getting is some elite white out pants and a bunch of enlisted and professional garbage. That's most likely going to happen. We can take a look at this list I put together here. These are all of the elite items he pulled in his videos. I won't lie, it took some extra effort to put this section together, but it's pretty valuable for what I'm about to say. As you can see, even though we got 121 total elites, let's take a look at the elites that are actually what we would consider with our human judging skills lucky elite variants, because that's not something that the number of 121 elites tells you. Well, we have the EM1 Poner, the RW1 Rail Driver, the Battle 27 Inferno, the ASM1 Speakeasy, the Bulldog Face Hammer, the IMR Thunder Tusk. That's six items. Out of 121 elites, out of 230 supply drops, out of 690 items. And I mean, there are some other good things here. There's the boar strike, the finger trap, the dynamo, the virtuosity, the whirlwind. And he got the professional ARX 160 hole puncher a couple times, which is admittedly an excellent gun, but that's still 13-ish solid items. Now ask yourself, would you drop $380 for 13 decent guns that, depending on how much you play, you probably have already? I know I basically have all of those already, so it wouldn't be worth it to me. You could buy copies of the very game you're playing six times over with that money, so can you really say this is pay to win? No. And I will add, even with these variants, it's not like you're going to be winning that many more gunfights at all. It's, it's a small advantage, and it's fun to use the cool variants, but they are not OP. You can go use the ASM-1 Magnitude, which you get by earning 300 kills with the ASM-1, and do just as well as the guy with the speakeasy. You just don't have a cool drum mag. So what I'm getting at is, if you're thinking of buying these supply drops, it's not that it's a terrible idea, but buy them for the right reasons. If you love opening supply drops, it's addicting, it's a thrill, and you have the money to spare, go ahead, knock yourself out. If you want to make a YouTube video reacting to yourself opening supply drops, go ahead, knock yourself out. But if you think buying these things will improve your KD in any way, I think you're a bit misguided there. Take that $20 of yours and go order some Control Freaks be a great time to pimp my coupon code if I had one. I am kidding, of course. But as we wrap up this video, if there are two things you can take away from it. One, yes, the percentages are a bit better than regular supply drops. Here they are for you to see. But two, they are in no way incredibly helpful or pay to win. So thank you for watching. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts and comments as always, and I will catch you next time.